I have a guest joining me in studio, and we're talking about a, a meeting coming up tomorrow night, and we were just joking off air. Uh, as she put it, she said, we need to get this done before it's too late. And I think a lot of people in this country feel that way. Uh, Glendita and it's Ziderveld, right? Yes. Joining Correct. us in studio uh, today from We the People of Magic Valley. Correct. And I'll have you pull the microphone around just a little bit. You know, it doesn't have to be too close, but okay. I, I can crank it up on my end here too if you like. Uh, that way if you wanted to shout, I can turn it down. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Tell us a little bit, uh, We the People of Magic Valley. Not necessarily a new organization, but still relatively new. Yeah, it's still relatively new. Um, we've been probably d t going together about uh, a year now, maybe a little bit more. Um, and it's just a, right now it's just a small group of people that were just like-minded, wanting to do, um, get involved with things to, um, you know, just be involved in what's going on in our country because we the people are actually the boss mm -hmm. and you know no business does good when the boss is absent and so it's time now for we the people to start coming together and um letting them know what we're expecting from them you know us being silent is just is where we're having a lot of the problems that we're having and so a bunch of us just came together and decided that we had this common interest, and um, and it's actually a bunch of groups of of um, local things going on. We have the John Birch that joins us. Um, we have Act for America. We have um, the Daily Post, and um, just they're just all these groups that we're all small individual, but together we become you know pretty strong in numbers when we work together. It, it reminds me a little bit, we used to just refer to it as Tea Party, I know, right. half a dozen years ago. But a lot of these organizations are a bit more specialized. Right. Each one has their own right. strengths. And so we're just gleaning from each other, you know, instead of, um, you know, like John Birch, you know, is more has more of the Constitution. They have a meeting. Um, they have a monthly showing at CSI um, on the U.S. Constitution and um, they're going to have Tom Munns from the John Birch Society in Boise come in and speak. I, I introduced Tom to the uh, McAllister Sandwich Shop a few weeks ago, so he'll oh. be back just to try the food there. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, good guy. And so they have that strength, you know. And then Act for America is more of like they help to get um, just more of your legislation, you know, and that's their strength. And then the We the People Magic Valley, we just, um, it's, you know, it's not, it's just a group of people who are just want to come and make Magic Valley great. Because, you know, we have to start here and then we can work out. And so um, we, we the people is just really trying to focus on our area. And, and we go to like city council meetings just to make a presence, you know, that we're here, we're watching um, this, you know, to keep people accountable that we put in in these positions. So a lot of people who are maybe in uh, in local government have seen a lot of you. I mean, whether it be city, town, uh, and county levels, mm -hmm. just just you're note takers in, in many ways. Right. Yeah. We're just kind of like watchdogs, I guess. You know, we're just watching and, and um, just making sure that, you know, they don't get off track or um, that they they represent the people who put them there correctly. Now, my experience has been that a lot of the folks, even though most of the people involved in these organizations are conservatives or registered Republicans or libertarians, and you would think, oh, they'll get along swimmingly with a lot of our local people in government because they're all registered in the same party. Uh, not always the case. Does that disappoint you a little bit? It does get discouraging, you know, but we have to keep on just... Um, not giving up, you know, and, um, but part of the problem is that I think they get in there too. And because we haven't been there and, and noticeable to them, um, it's kind of like, you know, children, when the parents are away, you know, they're going to try to push the, the limits on things and try to get away with things that they were not, you know, that they took it, they've taken an oath you know, to us. And sometimes I think we just need to remind them of that oath and then maybe even educate them on what that oath is. I think some of them haven't really understood the, the ramifications 
of, you know, not following that oath, what it means. You know, they have taken that oath to protect and to serve. You know, it's not us serving them, they're serving us. And I think we just need to remind them of that. Linda Zeidervelt is our uh, our guest uh, during this segment of the program. We're at 9-11. She's with We the People of Magic Valley. I'm not uh, you sure you're not hearing anything in the yeah. headset? I'll shout a little louder. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to try another set. Okay. We have guests who uh, who turn the knobs on those when they come in because some people oh. like them louder, some people like them. Yeah. Obviously, somebody decided to turn it all the way down. Uh, so she can now take a telephone call, too, as well. That means she can hear a telephone caller. Uh, 12 minutes after 9 o'clock. We're at 27. Bill Colley with you as well on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. You may find, I would assume, though, sometimes there are people in political office who are actually willing to, you know, willing to listen. And I'm sure that more and more they get to know you, it becomes a little easier. You know, they they have, and I, and I understand that they're busy um, too, but there's a few out there that will respond back, you know, even though it's probably something they have just copy and paste or send back to you. Um, but I think the more, it's like the squeaky wheel, the more we say something and the more we do, the more they're going to realize, Hey, these people are not going away. Um, and so we just have to, you know, we can't get discouraged. We have to keep on being that squeaky wheels and reminding them because, where we're at today isn't, we can't point fingers at them. You know, we're all part of this, you know, our, our lack of not wanting to be involved in it is, you know, part of our responsibility too. We can't be pointing fingers when there's our responsibility as well. There's, there's, there, there, I would at least though assume there's some respect that all of you are giving up free time and other things you could be doing to get involved in all of this. Right. And, and do you, I guess what I'm getting at here is we've been around so long in this movement and or these movements together that eventually I remember when I got involved in the Tea Party movement back in 2009 and we had a local legislator, state legislator, when I lived in Delaware. He was a Democrat and he said, oh, these people will be gone in a couple of years and they're still there and you know they have some impact. Uh, they've been able to get people elected, in fact, uh, to school boards and in local governments and the like. And I think that the fact that it hasn't gone away, that at least there's some at least grudging respect for what you're doing. Yeah, there there is. Um, and I think the probably some of the problem, too, and I know it was with me, is um, we start looking at our ability and what we can do. And so we don't want to get involved because we think, oh, I can't do that. Or, um, you know, and of course, they're always saying, you know, what are your qualifications? That's a big thing that you're hearing on there. Well, they're not qualified. A lot of the qualified people are not doing their job. And so sometimes I think it just takes people who have the heart and willing to learn and have change, you know, because when they get in there and then we don't, we don't like change, you know, we're like comfortable with that. You know, if we put in somebody new or, um, or if they run, you know, um, you start getting uncomfortable with things. And hey, I had a friend who got elected to the state legislature just this past year. And there was a time when people in her own party weren't speaking to her because, you know, and, and I kept pointing out to those people, look, she won mo more votes than anyone else. It's, it, there was nothing nefarious about this. She just, she won the election. Right. And, and, and it took a while for people to adjust to that because, so I, I asked a friend who retired from the legislature about this and she said, right. She said, because there are people who just, they're uncomfortable with something new and change. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that's where I think we get, you know, it's kind of like a haircut, you know, you stick with the same haircut over and over and over again, because you're just afraid of that change. And then it takes a while after you do that haircut, you know, and that's kind of to get used to that person in that position. But you know, there's a lot of, um, you have new ideas, you know, there's, there's a lot of people that maybe thinks a little different than that. And then all of a sudden, you're like, I didn't think of that, or I didn't have that idea. And so sometimes it's good to have that new, you know, that change, you know, not all change is bad, you know. For people who, who, you know, are thinking, I, there's a lot of people who've been sitting on the couch a long time and realize I do need to get involved. Uh, if they wanted to, what time do they, where and when tomorrow, I guess is the question. Well, tomorrow um, we're going to meet at Tomatoes. And if you want to come early and eat and fellowship a little bit before a meeting at seven o'clock, come at 630. 
and um, and it's in the back room of Tomatoes. And we're actually going to have a speaker, Milo Woods, um, from the Idahoans for Local Education in Boise, um, but the Core and Common Core Initiative is who is going to speak at our meeting tomorrow. Um, so yeah, come and, and um, learn about that. And then also, if you want to go on to uh, wethepeoplemagicvalley.com, that's our webpage. And again, that's wethepeoplemv.com, and all lowercase. And that has all the events. It has all the different groups on there. You can just go and, and learn. We have educational stuff because we believe education is a huge thing for people. A lot of people are not in the know. And we actually have, um, there's a millennial group, Millennial Act, and this is focused to our younger millennials to try to just educate them, because education is probably where we're lacking and not um, teaching. And I, I know that when I first got involved with these movements years ago, I went to a Rotary meeting and one of the fellows at my table said, you're not going to get anywhere being a member of that militia. And in the beginning, there was this, the, the media was portraying it as if somehow this was, this was, you know, a rebirth of what happened uh, here in the 1980s in Idaho, especially northern Idaho. But uh, I think people have grown to realize it's mainly, it's business people, it's farmers, it's... Uh, Housewives, mm -hmm. um, just people who love America, love our children. That is my huge thing for getting involved is um, just the love for my children and, and all that generation. I'm thinking, I don't want to leave them in a mess. And I want them to see that, hey, you know, my mom fought for this and she believed in this. You know, this is important for us. And I just don't want to leave, you know, I don't think any parent would want to leave a mess for their children. You know, if we're not willing to fight for it, why would they be willing to fight for it? You know, they're going to mirror what they see in us parents. One of the main reasons I got involved. I have two sons that are veterans, and I'm thinking if they can go and fight, then they need to see their mom fighting and then their dad's the same way. And I just think parents need to, we need to step up, you know. You might have different jobs, but we're, most of us are parents or we love our youth in some way. And so we need to really um, stand up and fight, you know. We've got about 30 seconds to go. One more time, tomatoes tomorrow night. Tomatoes at 7 o'clock, 6.30 if you want to come and eat. And we're having a speaker, Milo Woods, from Idahoans for Local Education in Boise. And, um, yeah, tomatoes in the back room, 7 o'clock. It's one of my coworkers' favorite. Uh, it's his favorite restaurant in town. Uh, Mine, too. <laughs> <laughs> I try to buy it a lot. I have to admit, to confess, there's so many restaurants in town I have not yet been there. But it's you on my list. Come tomorrow. I will try. Okay. I battle this thing called sleep uh, when I'm up late. It's late for me. I'll put it that way. Uh, <laughs> those of us who get up at 3 o'clock. I'd like to thank you for coming by today. Oh, thank you for having us. And again, it's We the People, Magic Valley, uh, Glendita Ciderveld, uh, joining us this morning in studio. And hopefully we'll be able to talk again sometime soon. I would like that. We've got more coming up in just a moment. You're listening to News Radio 1310, KLIX, News 1310.com. Top story with Bill Cully. Going to be talking a little bit about the scandal that's starting to develop with a uh, potential, how shall we put it, witch hunt against General Michael Flynn. That's on the way.